So we want to go in and understand how link communications work. What are the signals that we send? That's where we want to start with communications. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about performance of communication systems. Because later when we analyze or compare different systems, we will compare them based upon performance. And I think many of these things you will know or you've had exposure to already. So we'll give some examples of uh, what do we care about with respect to performance of communication systems. So data communications is about sharing information, getting information from one point to another. We want to talk first about what types of information. We've already mentioned different types of data, images, videos, audio. We mentioned some of them. What types of applications? Okay, right. We may talk about different types of internet applications, web browsing, email, file transfer, voice calls. And then we'll try and talk about, well, how much information do different types of applications typically transfer? So we'll try and measure how much information we need to transfer. And then start to introduce, well, what's a good communication system? If you get a job to go work for a company and you need to choose between two different systems to connect your company's office to another office, you need to be able to choose the best one. So we'll move into how do we measure good ones? What's effective communications? Then how can we measure the performance? And we'll finish with some examples of what applications require. Information and applications. Sorry. Where are we? Can I have some answers? How big is a web page? Any? Any ideas? A few KB. KB meaning what? Kilobytes. Okay, everyone understands bytes, bits, kilo, mega, giga, nano, pico. Don't worry, there's a, a, a practice lesson that you can do over the weekend that will remind you of all those things. Okay, I'll show you about that uh, towards the end. But, okay. A few kilobytes, okay, bytes, remember one byte, eight bits, let's uh, eventually we'll, well how do we measure information, one measure is bits or bytes, okay, how many bits in that piece of information, so a web page, a few kilobytes, any other suggestions, we'll test in a moment, let's have a look at some web pages and measure and see how big they are. Uh, our demo yesterday, I, we visited this, this website. How big is the web page? Uh, let's see. Let's save the page. And note, I'll save web page complete. We'll see why that's the case in a moment. Let's save it and then see how big it is. Save it. Uh, where am I? It is 4K, a few kilobytes was a good, uh, good answer. Exactly, well, 4K, that's a, a bad answer. It's exactly 233 bytes, this file. Okay. The web page, the HTML page, that small one, welcome to ITS 323, was 233 bytes. 4K was an approximation from a different piece of software. Ignore that bad answer. So less than a thousand bytes, less than a kilobyte, this one. But it was a very simple web page. Not all web pages are, are that simple. Why is it 233 bytes? It's text, it's HTML. What does it tell you? That if it's 233 bytes, 233 characters most likely. Okay. It's just a text file with some, some strings, some HTML tags, and welcome to ITS323. If we counted how many characters, word count on that file, 
word count is a program that tells us there are 12 lines, 25 words, and 233 characters inside that file. Okay, if you open the file in the text editor and went through, you count 233 characters. Each character is represented by a single byte. Okay. That's common with most operating systems. Uh, how do we represent a character as a byte? How do we represent a character as a byte? What's the name of the common system? Let's look at this text file in the binary form. And it will come up terrible on the screen here, but you'll take some notice because it's, it's a little bit uh, condensed. This is the binary form of the text file. So uh, let's zoom out so we can fit it in. For example, what it says is this H here in the last HTML tag is represented by these eight bits. Okay, this is just the binary view of that text file. Why do we get these eight bits for H? Why isn't it? What's the name of the system? Or the, how do we? ASCII. ASCII. Okay, ASCII encoding. Okay, you all know that. Where you, it's a mapping of letters, characters. To binary, or it goes to decimal numbers. ASCII is usually seven bits, but it's usually represented as eight-bit number. There are other encodings. That's just the common one. So any text, characters that we type, for example, we can easily convert to binary, to, to bits, zeros and ones. Back to our web page. Maybe a different website. SIT website. Let's. Uh, let's save as. Save page as. Let's just call it SIT. I think this will do it. This is just a short way to give me the size. The sit.html file, the basic web page, is about 40k, 40 kilobytes. But there are files with this web page. Images, style sheets, JavaScript. All of them come and are needed to display the web page as is. And they are saved in this directory, which makes up another 836 kilobytes. So, it's getting close to one megabyte for that one web page. So how big is a web, web page? It depends upon the content on that web page. But you're talking the order of uh, kilobytes to megabytes, typically. Okay. If you go to Google and do the same, you'll see it's probably the similar size to this. Many different websites. Many images, much, much bigger. OK, how big is an, we won't do all of these, an email? Well, email usually just text, although you can add attachments. So if it's just text, the number of characters uh, is represented by a single byte. And maybe there's some extra information attached to the email, like source address, who is it from, who is it to, subject, and so on. We'll not do that. How big is a photo? So emails, well, it depends on how long your email is. Uh, again, in the order of kilobytes plus attachments. What about a photo? Depends upon what? The resolution, the pixels. So specifically, the resolution is the what? The width and the height. Okay, so X by Y. And what else does it depend upon? So yes, a higher resolution or higher width and, and height. The format, the type of file, a JPEG, a bitmap, a PNG, a GIF, or, or other formats. What else? Resolution, format, color. How do we represent color? Bits. So a picture is really a set of pixels. Width by height, a set of dots. Each 
pixel, each dot, is a particular color. So the number of pixels in the image is the, the resolution, is the, the width times the height. And each pixel is a color, and we represent that color by some binary value. Okay. So the color depth, or the bit depth of that pixel, impacts upon the size. I've got some examples of the same picture. Uh, where? Here's a picture, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, I just got it from some NASA website the other day. It's hard to see, the, the, it's 4,859 pixels by 3239. Width is 4,859, height is 3239. So that's the number, of the, the resolution. And the size is about 47 megabytes. Okay. Why is it that? Let's have a look. I need my calculator. We have 4859 pixels across. And down we have 3239 pixels. So that's the number of pixels or dots in this picture. Sorry. That's the number of pixels. This uh, 15 million pixels. Each pixel is a, is a color. And the color is represented by some binary value. And typically, how, how many bits do we use to represent the color? It, it varies. So black and white would be how many bits? Two, zero or one, black or white. Although we could then have gray scale, different scales. This one, I think, is 24 bits, three bytes per pixel. So that's the number of pixels times by 24 will give us the number of bits in this picture. There are 15 million pixels. Each pixel is represented by a 24-bit value. That's the number of bits in the picture. How many bytes? Divide by eight. Divide by a million, convert to megabytes. 47.2 megabytes. Okay, that's the size of the image. In fact, the size of the file. So this file is simply the width times the height times by the number of bits per pixel, the color depth. How big are most of your pictures? Are they 47 megabytes? You take a photo, Why? what's different? Compressed. This pi picture was, I don't know if it says anywhere, this, the format of this picture was TIFF, T-I-F-F. It's a format that's used commonly for uncompressed data. There's no compression. But with many types of media, we can compress it either without losing information or, or even possibly losing information to make the file much smaller. Uh, I think I have it here. Same picture, almost the same, two megabytes. Okay, you check the difference. 47 megabytes, 2 megabytes. 47, 2. Almost no noticeable dis difference. The 2 megabyte picture is a JPEG. JPEG defines the format and it defines how to compress the information. It is actually lost lossy compression in that, that it throws some of the information away. So it's not exactly the same picture. Some of the information that was in the original picture is thrown away just to make the file size smaller. So it uses things like
compression we will not cover in this course, but things like if there's a repetitive pattern, I don't know, there are a hundred blue pixels in a, in a line. Instead, instead of storing those a hundred blue pixels, store some value that tells you that there are a hundred blue pixels. And when you decompress, it shows those hundred blue pixels. But it's more advanced than that. But compression is used there. So photos are in the order of megabytes. Depends upon the format, the size, and the color depth. How big is a song? Let's measure all these in bits, okay, so we can compare. How big is a single song? About. Right? Three, four, five bits? No, three, four, or five megabytes, okay? In the order of several megabytes, three megabytes, four, five megabytes. Again, the answer is it depends. Depends on what? Song length, okay? Let's say a typical song is three, four, or five minutes. The encoding or the format, MP3 is, defines a way to encode the audio. A song is audio. To encode that into a digital form. Okay, the audio is an analog, is analog information. Sound is some continuously varying signal. But with music files, we encode it as bits. MP3 is one way to do that. And again, it applies compression. What are some other formats? MP3? FLAC? M M4A? Uh, old style WMA? Windows? Many, okay? Many different formats. They, even with MP3, there are different options, different rates that will give different quality. We'll return to some of those things in a later topic on signal encoding and look at how audio is encoded as binary. Songs in the order of megabytes, audio CD, not a CD, 700 megabytes typically, around 700 megabytes. How much song, how much, how many minutes of audio on an audio CD? On the old style, the ones you buy, the actual audio CDs, not with MP3 on them, but a true audio CD. 60, 70 minutes, if you measure the, the length of the, the audio. Why? We'll cover that in another topic. We'll do the calculation of why can we fit 60 or 70 minutes on a 700 megabyte file. We'll not go through it now. Uh, let's, let's do one more. A movie. How big's a movie? Gigabytes, megabytes, kilobytes? What's it depend upon? Okay, good. I think people see the, the similar patterns. They see the formats, which is the way that the data, the information is encoded into binary, and it, whether it applies compression or not. Like, what are some formats? What are some formats that you've heard of? MKV, MP4, MPEG4 maybe. There are many others. The size of the picture. What is a video? A video is a, a picture. It's a photo that changes at a regular rate. It's just a, a picture and then a few milliseconds later a new picture is shown. It just flicks through. So it's just photos which have X or horizontal and, and vertical resolution okay, and have a color depth, each pixel, but also the video change, the picture changes at some frame rate, refresh rates, so talk uh, at refresh rates. Formats, resolution, refresh rates impact upon the size. Let's have a look at an example. Where, where can I find a movie? 
movie. YouTube. <laughs> Correct. But hard to measure the, the information. I've uh, looked up some data, okay? Found a movie and <laughs> I didn't download it. Just But it, it, it gives us some information about the movie. That's why I've chosen this website. It gives us the size of the file. About 10, 10 gigabytes. Okay, The size of the file. But it also gives us... It also gives us some information about that, the video inside this file. Remember, video is normally video plus audio. Okay. So the, there's an audio track, at least one, plus the video track. So we usually treat them separately. In this case, they say that the video gives us some information. Let's see if we can calculate. Uh, the resolution... If, if you cannot see at the back, it's small. I'll, I'll write these numbers again in a moment. The resolution is 1,920 pixels across, 800 pixels down. So each frame, each, each picture is that size. It doesn't tell us the color depth. We'll make an assumption in a moment as how many bits per pixel. It also tells us the frame rate. 23.976 frames per second, about 24 frames per second. So the image changes 24 times per second. So every second, I think there are 24 images. The duration of this movie is 2 hours 15 minutes. So from that, we can work out how many pictures for the entire duration and then how many bits for the entire duration. It also tells us the bit rate. We'll come back to them in a moment. But let's just look at the picture and calculate how big it is. Uh, let's close this one. Let's just make notes of what we have. This is the, the resolution, the number of pixels across and down. We had a frame rate of 20, about 24 frames per second, FPS, frames per second, where a frame is just one picture. Okay. How many bits per pixel? Let's make an assumption that it's same as normal, that it's, a typical one is 24 bits per pixel. Uh, yeah, let's, let's start with that. So, I don't know the answer, wh whether it's 24 or, or it's a lower value, but 24 is typical. That is, this is uh, the number of pixels, okay? And then a typical color depth is 24 bits per pixel. So what we want to know is how many bits in our movie. And the other thing we had is our movie was 2 hours 15 minutes. Okay? Or 135 minutes. Okay. I want to know how many bits to store this movie. And I think multiply, multiply, multiply multiply them all together and you'll get the answer. That is, how many pixels? Multiply these two together. How many bits per frame? So this is one frame. How many bits per frame? Multiply these two by 24 bits per pixel. So we have the number of bits per frame. How many frames per second? Multiply by 24 again. These two numbers are not connected. 
It's a coincidence that they're both 24. Then we get bits per second. How many seconds? Well, we know the number of minutes, so we can find the number of seconds and therefore get the number of bits. Uh, find my calculator again. What do we have? 1920 by 800. 24 bits per pixel. 24 frames per second. Yeah, we have 60 seconds in one minute. And we know it was 2 hours 15 minutes or 135 minutes. The answer will be the number of bits. Okay, 7 by 10 to the power of 12 bits in this movie. Convert it to a, a maybe a nicer number. Convert it to gigabytes. The gigabits first. Giga is 10 to the power of 9. So that's the number of gigabits. Gigabytes divided by 8. 900 gigabytes, or 895 gigabytes. Okay. Approximately. So we took the total number of bits converted to uh, gigabits and then gigabytes. Let's record it. 895 gigabits. Uh, gigabytes. I'm getting confused. Let's write it down. Gigabytes. Uppercase B for bytes. That's the size of that image, of that, of that video. But if you remember on the web page, the file was much smaller than that. Okay. This is the file, if you think of the uncompressed video. There's no compression. The raw video, the pixels across, down, each color, and then every frame is displayed. But the same with audio and images, we can compress video and actually compress it quite a lot. For example, if you have, t if you have a, a sequence of the movie which things don't change much, then each frame is almost the same as the previous frame, so you can store that quite more efficiently. So the raw video is 895 gigabytes. Yep. Yes, and this is just for the picture, not the audio. How about the audio? Uh, all right, you'll calculate the audio yourself. But generally, the audio is smaller than the video. If we get time, we'll calculate. This is just the video component. Where are we? But the file is 10 gigabytes, not 890 gigabytes. So in fact, it's compressed. And the file contains not just the video, but it also contains audio. And in fact, the information gives us a little bit more. Another characteristic given here is the bit rate. The video bit rate. There's another one for audio. The video bit rate is 8851 kilobits per second. This is, think of this as after compression. The number of kilobits per second of this video, on average, it's usually average because it goes up and down. So after compression, after encoding, the average rate of this video is 8. 1.8 megabits per second and the audio is 1.5 megabits per second let's use those two numbers just to finish off This is the video only. We didn't do it for audio. Compressed 
after compression or after encoding, the video became eight, according to the website, something like 8851 kilobits per second. And the audio, 1509 kilobits per second. That's what the website says anyway. Let's just check. So, 8851 kilobits per second. How long for the entire movie? We'll calculate 8851. kilobits per second. How many seconds? Well, times 60 times 135, because that's the 135 minutes of video. Kilobits. That's megabits. Gigabits, divided by 8. 8.9 gigabytes, the video only, compressed. Okay. 8.9 or about 9 gigabytes for video and while we're here the audio was 1509 kilobits per second times 60 convert to minutes times 135 to convert to the t entire duration kilobits megabits gigabits, 1.5 gigabytes, okay? So audio about 1.5 gigabytes, video about 9 gigabytes, total 10, 10 and a half gigabytes. And I think if you check the file size, it's, it's about that. Approximately. The total and that I think the file size was ten point something gigabytes. So compression worked quite well on video. It goes from nine hundred gigabytes down to nine gigabytes. It's compressed by a factor of one hundred. So very efficient there. Again, what's the size of a video? Depends upon the resolution, the frame rate, the pixels, the color depth, the bits per pixel, and the duration. And the format. How much compression is applied? Any questions? Some of the calculations I went through quick, but I think you'll work them out with a few examples later and some quizzes. Any questions? You can find for other examples how big that piece of information is. So, if I want to transfer a movie from one device to another, one computer to another, I've got much more information to be able to transfer than, say, a web page or an email or just a photo. So when we build communication systems, we need to look at, well, what are the requirements? How much information do we need to transfer? And what do we expect in terms of performance? How long are we willing to wait for that transfer? Let's do a couple more slides just to finish for today. Different types of information. Sometimes we classify as, well first, information can be stored as in an analog or a digital form. Many of our examples will look at a digital form, but we'll see later some more examples of analog data. Audio is a good one. 
Video is also represented as analog data. But commonly today, we convert it into a digital form. Okay. When you talk on the phone, if you're talking on your home landline telephone line, you're sending analog data. But if you're using your mobile phone, it's actually analog data going into the microphone on your mobile. The mobile phone converts that to digital. Okay, it sends it as bits. So there's a conversion process. So analog, voice calls, radio, music, audio, video, and, and they can be either analog or digital. Video, video conferencing, video streaming. And sometimes we distinguish a third type as the others. We've got audio, video, and data. Where data here means it's not audio or video. Messages, emails, web pages, files, all the other applications that we exchange data. What we'll do next week is look at how can we measure whether a communication system is good at sharing data. And we'll look at delivery, accuracy and timeliness and then look at performance metrics like data rate, delay, throughput and a few others. But we'll do them next week. Okay, so we'll stop there.